So what are you doing today, Maureen, with a big jug of milk? So today I have a very special guest in Farmer Moe's Kitchen. It is my son-in-law, Carl Eric. Yay! Oh, yeah. Yeah. And Carl Eric is an absolute treasure to my heart and such a wonderful man. And my daughter is so blessed to have him, which I'm really blessed to have him as well. I'm gonna talk about kefir, kefir. 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 <laughs> I still can't <laughs> say it right. Kefir. 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 Yeah. I need someone with a cell phone that, that translator to go. Kefir. You do say it completely right. Yeah, it's kefir. 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 Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So my son-in-law is a brilliant, brilliant man, and he is my general biology guy. Because it's biology, whether it is to do with body things and health, or whether it's to do with food, the biology of food, because you also are an amazing chef as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, at, at times you are my, my science guy, you know, and I have a question about something about science, and when I have something about financing and the stock market and stuff like that. Yeah. You're, you're, he's my everything guy, that's what he so is. He came over the other day and he says, hey, do you want some kefir seeds? No. Nope. Kefir grains. Oh, kefir. Kefir grains and uh, this little, little bottle and... I just came over and stuck it in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> I have some kefir grains that you brought over. Mm -hmm. What is kefir? What is it, yes. Uh, it's a very complex culture of yeast and bacteria organisms. Mm -hmm. And I think the last one I saw went up to 61 different strains of yeast, but it is similar to other probiotics like kombucha, kimchi, or even yogurt. Mm -hmm. Unlike those uh, probiotics, which are transient organisms, uh, which means they pass right through your gut. Mm -hmm. uh, kefir has the type that will actually repopulate your gut and stay there more permanently. Right. So you brought me kefir. Kefir. So you brought me kefir grains. So then I was like, okay, so now what do I do with it? It is just this white liquidy stuff. No. Well, no, it's not. But it, like, it looks like it. It does. It no. does smell like bruised yeast. It smell. Yeah. It yeah. It's alive. Starting to uh, ferment the lactose into lactic acid, and so you get that sour smell. Right, but um, it's not. It, this doesn't smell like sour milk to no. me. It's smelling more like, like brewer's yeast. Yeah, because there's so many different types of yeast in there. Right, that you get that general yeasty smell. Right, so kefir grains is what you brought over. Yeah, and so in that container, it's it was originally milk, but you see how that's thickened and mm -hmm. chilled. Mm -hmm. That's what happens when it ferments in the kefir. Right. Uh, the kefir grains are actually the weird rubbery bits that are in there. Yeah, I brought a spoon. Okay, I see some in here. So one of the byproducts of fermentation is that rubbery material. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way it happens to lace together molecularly, make ribbons of what feels like rubber. Right. Um, the first time I drank kefir, I didn't filter it, so I had a lot of those in it and I thought someone had accidentally put in tape <laughs> <laughs> into the grains. So I was pulling these strips out of my mouth thinking this is... Disgusting. Yeah. yeah. Right. So with the grains, uh, because what, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna make some. Mm -hmm. And you, so you told me I needed to go out and get some whole milk, preferably mm -hmm. not homogenized. Okay. And so I do, we do have a place here in Victoria that does sell it. This does have the cream on the top, but you also, uh, when you came over, you said, did you have it out of the fridge, Maureen? Mm -hmm. And I said, no. And so then you said, well, I have a little yeah. tip for that. So what do I do? I like to put it in pretty hot water. Um, just, I put the whole jug in. Yep. Um, do I need to open it first? Yeah, just in just case to, it expands. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just to take the seal off and then mm -hmm. I'll just do that. Oh, and you can see that there's the cream on the top. And so we'll stick it in there while we're chatting. Mm -hmm. So we've just put it in a big bowl of hot water. I should just keep doing this. This is my good, yeah. my exercises. I'll try to be able to lift as much as you do. You know, you came over the other day and I said, what is a zytokine storm? What is that? Oh, that's when all the cells in your body realize there is something seriously wrong in your body, mm -hmm. like an illness, disease, virus, and uh, all the cells around the same time release uh, what are called cytokines and they are basically kind of like little, putting up a red flag throughout your body right and it puts your immune system on to attack 
everything to try and get whatever this is that's attacking your body. Right. And uh, preclinical studies have shown that giving uh, kefir to rats and mice prior to instigating a uh, sandkind storm, however they do it in labs, uh, has decreased severity as well as death rate to near non-existent. <laughs> so, right. Wow. Yeah. So the thing is, is that this helps with things going wrong in the body, inflammation. Mm -hmm. And that's all through by the bacteria and yeast that it brings through your gut biome. Mm -hmm. uh, it releases different chemicals and interaction with your entire body uh, immune system. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so how do you how do you make kefir grains? <laughs> Did I didn't say it right. I couldn't find out how they were made. I think it was more of an accumulation of different cultures. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, historically it's been traced back to shepherds in the Caucasus Mountains. Mm -hmm. And they would carry this milk and they I think the myth of it was that they never seemed to have illness and uh, it became something that they passed around so it was a continuous culture. Right. And uh, apparently different families have maintained their own culture through generations and that's kind of where flowers kind of originate. Right. Cool. Mm -hmm. So it's almost in the same line as sourdough bread. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it was like you came over and you said here where you stuck these in my fridge. Yeah. And um, and so now I have kefir grains, and so after I process them and take them out, I can again pass them on to someone else, and we can just can keep this kind of going and keep yeah. growing. Yeah, and it, because it grows, you can actually divide it up and keep half for yourself, which I'm never half away. Right, right. Our milk is warming up, but you have some from at your house, and yes. so you brought some over for me to try. Oh. Yay! And I've got two little shot glasses. This is a this is That's full. Not. <laughs> fully done. Yeah. Mm. It smells milky and ice creamy. It doesn't smell sour. Yeah, I've added whipping cream to it. Ooh. It's a little trick to make it smoother. Right. Because it is kind of sour tasting. Yeah. And now, if you are wanting to fix your health or you are sick, how much should you take in a day? One, Approximately. One to three cups. One to, one to three big heaping cups. Yeah. Depends how much you like it, how much you're able to drink. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty smart to start with a low half a cup, quarter cup, because uh, it can wreak havoc on your digestion the so first you time. So start small. So like even yeah. just having like these, these are like a three ounce shot glasses. Yeah, that's what I started with. Right. So you just start with that, let it build up into the system, and then throughout the day, you know, mm -hmm. you don't just go and gulp three oh. jugfuls of them. <laughs> it's good to have it. I really need my kibber! <laughs> it's good to have it before your first meal, and I like it after the last meal. Okay, so I do know that my daughter prefers to have honey in hers. Yes. So I'm gonna pour you uh, about a half, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna pretend to pour some. <laughs> I'm just a little bit scared. I'm a little bit scared. So she puts honey in hers. So I do have this spoon that is stolen from your guys' place, but it's a little spoon that I like to have. <laughs> Those are useful. That's right. Well, I think I think I did. I did steal the little spoon, or not steal because it was brought over um, once. And and it's so handy to have a little spoon. So mm -hmm. I don't think she minds. Now I'm taking uh, about a quarter teaspoon of honey. I think that should be enough. I'm going to stir mine in. I'm pretty sure Kefir generally likes sweets. So it likes that it likes that I'm adding in yeah, some honey. It, it can eat it. Right. Oh, so it's gonna start eating it right now. Yeah, probably. It's and, a little bit on the cold side, so. Right. Do you store it in the fridge? Yes. If you don't store it in the fridge, it will start crawling out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's alive! Yeah. Depending on how fast it one bubbles up. Yeah. Alright. Alright, so. Yeah, school. School. Mmm. Oh my. That's that's tasty. Mm -hmm. I need a little fizzy. Mm hmm Very little fizziness, but mm. no, like it's um I think the honey just kind of makes it taste like it's ice cream. Yeah. I like adding the uh, mango juice or uh mm. any fruit juice really. Right. I think when we were talking the other day about this, you know, we were talking when you go to Korean restaurants and mm. afterwards they give you a little probiotic drink. This is basically yeah the same. Okay, so we are going to make kefir. Yeah, that's really easy. That's really easy. The kefir does all of it. Okay, so 
We have, do you want to just feel this milk and see what you think? Or let me do it quick. Oh, it's, it'll keep warming up. Okay. I'm making a big one because I wanted to make some, mm -hmm. some for some friends of mine. And so you said that I probably should remove about a half a cup, right? Yeah, just so we can put the cup here in there. Oh, I've got, this has got cream in it. Ooh. I might put the cream back in. You should, it'll make it really smooth. Really smooth? Yeah. So this, the main thing is to get the rubber, the, I call it rubber, but it's the kefir grains. Right. Yeah. They're little uh, kind of... They're the community. <laughs> <laughs> They're their friends. Everybody, everybody. And so what's going to happen when I put this in here? Uh, they are going to most likely sink to the bottom, or close to. Yeah. Um, as it warms up, they will start to wake up and start digesting the lactose and make turning into lactic acid. And as it does that, it will also produce little bubbles. Uh -huh. And those bubbles will collect around the grains, right. and after about 12 hours, they will float to the top. And that's when you know the fermentation is technically complete, but then you let it go depending on how strong you like it. Now, do I need to do a shake or a... You can if you've added all the stuff, because yep. if you give it a shake once you've added it, yep. it will actually just... First. Just first more? Yeah. All right. And I think... Um, and you get a more of an even um, fermentation happening. Right. So you don't... Less likely to get lumps and curds. Right. I normally uh, ferment one to two liters, which usually takes yeah, 12 and 18 hours. Mm -hmm. um, I've noticed with the larger batches, closer to four liters, it's going to take about 24 hours. All right. So let it go for... 36. 36. Okay. <laughs> Just because it's cold. Right. Now, is there anything wrong with doing this process in the plastic? Because, like, I noticed yours was in glass. Uh, I just put it in glass because I had it on hand. Mm -hmm. um, I did my last one in a carton just like this. So okay. It works just fine. Right. Then what is my next process? So I've, it's 36 hours. I'm going to want to leave the lid off or mm -hmm. on loose so air can come out so it doesn't blast off. When I'm For the 36 hours? Yeah. Okay. Because uh, it's going to be digesting and making its own air. Uh, bubbles, mm -hmm. so it will start expanding if you leave the lid on. <laughs> um, Boom! Yeah. Milk everywhere! Exactly. Uh. So I did that twice. <laughs> uh, other thing is, you would want to check it out at the 24 hour mark just to see if it happens to get overactive. Right. Um, I gave you this one because I had already woken this one up after a long hibernation. Okay. Um, so it should activate a little faster. Okay. Um, but after long times in the cold, they will hibernate. So it, when you put cold milk in with it, it can put it back into hibernation. Right. So it adds a few hours so, on. So should I put this somewhere, not in direct heat, but somewhere a little bit warm? Uh, that can change the flavor. Oh, okay. If you ferment it too fast, uh, okay. like 28, 30 degrees Celsius, actually get really sour mm -hmm. because the back the bacteria and the yeast ferment a lot faster, so you okay. lose control of it. And uh, because of digesting it faster, the flavor changes in other ways. Um, rather than uh, carrying it over from the start to the end, it kind of destroys it. And, okay. Yeah. Once I have you check it to see if it's done, mm -hmm. then what's my next step? Uh, <laughs> when it's done is completely uh, completely personal preference because right. uh, it depends on how sour you want it. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, I go by the smell. Uh, when, it's, when I start to smell the bread yeast smell, I okay. I call it done. Yeah. Um, and that and bubbles. Yeah. And once that's done, I pour it through a fine mesh sieve or strainer, mm -hmm. um, and that will catch all the cheese curds and the grains themselves. Okay. Um, but if it Sometimes it will be very thick, like it'll come out like yogurt. Okay. And it'll be a, identical to a process you did another time and it comes out exactly like milk. Like okay. The consistency will vary. It'll just, it just it, again, it's the environment, it's what's, yeah. what's it's done. It's all the detail. So to save my seeds. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you just uh, keep stirring the whatever's in your sieve. Yeah. And what will, all that will be left are the seeds. The okay. Grains. Yeah. So even if there is some other curds, mm -hmm. you, you know, the so curds will reincorporate back in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then I just add a little bit of milk to it. Uh, yeah. You take the grains, you put them into a uh, container, and you just add some milk to refeed, give them some food, and then stick it in the fridge yeah. until I'm ready to mm -hmm. process it again. That's right. After I'm drinking my three cups of kefir every single day, mm -hmm. I will be through this jug in no time. Yeah. I drink only a cup a day. Okay. And I 
take a couple of days off because it's repopulating, so there's no point. Right. Right. But I think it's like when you are more in in a state where you know you're needing those extra things, then you do want to. Yeah. yeah. So if you've taken an antibiotic, you can take kefir about two, three hours afterward. Right. And that's going to help to put that good bacteria help to. That's right. Bring health and healing. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's awesome. Well, thanks very much. I, I really that. appreciate <laughs> it. I thought this is it was uh, when we were chatting about it, it. Was like this is so fascinating, and I thought, you know other people like and this is something that, that mm -hmm. you know that is inexpensive yeah for bringing in you know better health in, into your system into your yeah. body it can help people adapt to uh, lactose again so they can get over lactose intolerance wow uh, it boosts your immune system uh, it boosts your immune system responses I've been told in stories that it can be used to fight cancer I don't know the validity of that right but anything to just even help with the health while you are fighting cancer or you know th mm -hmm. those kinds of things so yeah that's awesome so thanks carl eric for coming yeah, you're welcome thank yeah. you <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we did today Kefir. Kefir. <laughs> i still can't say it right well good morning it's now day two with our kefir i did check it last night carl eric he had a little smell of it and he said perfect and I said, well, I'm not ready to strain it because I was just going to bed. And he said, then just put it in the fridge. So that's a good tip. If you're not ready, you don't want it to continue to ferment. So I've already strained one jar, but I thought it would be fun for you to see it. Here's our milk jug. And this one, Carl Eric, you know, he said, sometimes it's going to be like yogurt and sometimes it'll just come out like milk. So this is quite chunky. And so I've just got it on my sieve and pouring it all out. And then we're just gonna stir. So I just wanted you to get a real good close up. See if we can see the kefir seeds. Now I have some of them, it looks almost like it's turned into butter here. <laughs> some of the cream. I think I had a long one just a second ago to, for you to see the kefir grain. But they're in there and there, yeah, see, so there's one, you see it's a little whiter there. So it's just, it's not long and tapey like, but maybe they will grow into that. So I'm going to put this into a jar with some more whole milk. So we'll do a taste test. I'm going to bring Marissa in and we'll taste it up. So we've got a little bit here. Marissa's going to try it with me, continue to try it with the honey. So a wee bit for you. Thank you. Again, we're going with a half a teaspoon of... There's about a half teaspoon. Okay. So consistency-wise, I think it's like, it's thinner than yogurt. It's like the yogurt drinks mm. is what it looks like. Mm. Well, I think th at the Korean store, this is about how it is. How does it smell? Um, really nothing at all, honestly. Like no. it's, it smells like milk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sweet, very, you know, not very sweet, but sweet milk. Honestly, I thought that it was going to smell a little bit like, um, like buttermilk or something sour, mm -hmm. but like the good kind of sour. All right, lahaim, lahaim. Mmm. Oh, that's nice. Mmm. Honestly, uh, it could probably ferment longer. Yeah. Or, or use less sweetener. Whoops. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think quarter teaspoon is probably better. Mm -hmm. Tastes a little bit like the uh, yogurt. Yogurt. Yeah. Just. Literally, just but not yogurt. as sour as yogurt. Mm -mm, mm -mm. But it is a plain yogurt. That's yummy. So there is our kefir. There is our kefir. Have a great day. Yay! <laughs> I might have to cut that out because I was licking my fingers and walking away. Oh. <laughs>